So, um, hello, Overtones. Hello. Hi. And I, Hi. I was wondering if you could do that thing you probably do a lot of at the moment, but just tell us who you are. Mm -hmm. But as you go around, could you also tell us the, the, the vocal area mm -hmm. would yep. be in the group? So I can... Hi, my name's Darren, and I'm the falsetto, so I'm the high macho one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Mark, and I'm one of the middle harmonies, uh, baritone. Uh, I'm Mike, and I'm, again, one of the middle harmonies, but the tenor. And my name's Timmy. I sing a, a lot of lead, but obviously I do sing harmonies as well. Quite high. Hi, Paul. I'm lucky, and I sing bass. Never. <laughs> Wouldn't have thank it. And, and, and does that dictate how you are arranged, then? Are you always in this oh, order? Or pattern? No, yeah. no, no, no. This is straight for us. <laughs> yeah. I just wondered if you had an order, you know, like regimented, that this was always... Uh, lucky is normally on the end, aren't you? But when we sing a cappella, you guys do stand to sit together. Stand yeah, together. roughly. Yeah. Roughly, yeah. yeah. I think we that. have kind of mm. nearly got There are that. certain places that help when, mm. uh, who's standing where will will give a clearer sound. Mm. And then when there's a like a live performance with backing tracks and things like that, we've got obviously lead in the middle, then mm. to either side. So, mm. so yeah. Because that looks it, nice. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, decorative. It can vary. It can vary. <laughs> and, and, and how did you all kind of get together then? Were you put together or did you find each other? No, well, I think all of us, four of us, have known each other about five years. Mm -hmm. um, and all of us wanted to get into music and, you know, kind of decided to stick together really instead of being out there trying to audition for other groups and stuff let's do it ourselves you know mm. um, and we were out doing acoustic sets around London and everyone was saying oh you sound like a vocal group kind of do up a bit barbershop you know um, and then about a year and a half ago I was doing a, a leafleting job in a department store as you do uh, with lucky hair and you could hear him going like uh, homes where home sale <laughs> Hello, madam. Uh, no. I don't I could, care. I could, I could hear him singing. I was like, lads, I'm working with this guy. He's got such a bass voice. Like he, he would really kind of complete the sound, you know. Um, and then we met up and we had a lot of harmonies together. And Lucky just fitted right in. And he was like the icing on the cake. And our secret weapon. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's interesting, the, the idea of being, I guess, a doo-wop group <coughs> or a vocal harmony group. Because for many, many years in pop music, that, that sort of thing would have been deemed utterly old-fashioned oh, and, and nobody would have been interested in. And recently, for whatever reason, the idea that now it just seems to be part of the spectrum, doesn't it? I do mm. think this, this structure has, has always been around, though, even since, mm. since the Ink Spots. I mean, mm. bands like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, it, obviously there was a lot of production covering it, but mm. if you strip it back, they had the bass to the full setup. Mm -hmm. there, there was an amazing vocal group, so we even draw inspiration from acts like that. Mm -hmm. But I think we're just stripping it back a bit, and we've got some amazing producers on the album. Amazing, we've got that Amy Winehouse's sax player, haven't we? Mm. Yeah. And, and we like to give it a big, like band sound, but the beauty of having these five voices is that we can just do it stripped and with mm. a finger click, mm. and you, you've still got a full sound. Yeah. So it's like you've got five voices. Mm. Why would you try and sing one harmony when you can sing four? Like there's a there's a quality of the sound when you've got uh, these harmonics mm. going that seems so logical to mm. to mm. do. But you, but I think you you bang on when you say that it's coming right back. Like yeah, I think it, this sound is really pushing back through. And the girls kind of obviously got mm. there as well. You had Amy and Duffy and all these people bringing it back, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And Amy Winer said I had a, a, you know, a massive album with Back to Black, you know? So I think it's nice to hear some male vocals, um, you know, get male voices getting on the, the sound mm. of doo-wop as well. Do you put it down to just a genuine kind of craving for, for almost, even though it's nostalgic, a fresh sound? Or is it, is it just nostalgic? Are people just thinking, well, pop was better in those days, there was more craft, there was more elegance? Personally, I, I mean, I to be myself and, and the rest of the lads, we all draw inspiration from the old groups, even back to the Ink Spots, going to the Drifters, you know, Temptations, you know, they all had this structure with the bass mm -hmm. leading up to the falsetto. And, and I just think it's nice to take it back. I mean, they, all them groups started on street corners. I mean, we just sing anywhere. We, we'll be singing in Comic Garden, we'll sing on a tube, we'll sing in the cafe. We just love to sing, that's what we do. So yeah. if we're together, we sing. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I could this is a moment. There's a drum roll. Cool. Just suddenly surprised me. Like come back. Come come back. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Do the wap. Do the way. Do the wap. Do the way. Do the wap. Won't you come back, my love? Don't go away. I need your loving every day. I love you so well. I want you to know. I need your love so badly. You say goodbye, I wonder why oh, Because of those silly lies I love you so well, I want you to know I need your love so badly Everybody makes big 
mistakes in this game of romance. Now I'm asking you, darling, why don't you come back and give me a chance? Whoa, 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 do, come back, my love, do, yeah, don't do, go away. What, what, do, I need your do, do, loving every day. What, what, I love you so what, well, what, I want what, you to know. I need your love so badly. I need your love so badly. Strangely intimate, as the, uh, <laughs> as close as you do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> does it feel a kind of intimacy between you? And you know the naturalness of, of how you do that. Does it feel it kind of intimate? Yeah. Well, close. I think being in tune, you kind of mm. have to, you know, you get used to kind of singing to each other, I suppose. Mm. But mm. you kind of almost have to know where you are, where you're at vocally as well, so mm. that you can kind of try and get a nice. Blend yeah. sound also, out. in terms of levels, you need to know so when you're having a bit of a crescendo when you're. Mm. We've got little signals as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we, sang, we sang the other night at, um, at Albert Hall. An absolute blast. Mm. But the stage is so big and like the mics are set across mm. one straight mm. line and you're a long way from each other. So, this mm. is actually. Well, personally, I get more pleasure from mm. the the smaller and seeing and hearing mm. immediately mm. what's mm. going on between the boys, right? I mean, I ain't going to diss the Albert Hall Road because it's one of the best nights of my life and it's been a dream to perform there, but like you're a long, oh, I'm a long way from there. Yeah. 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 So we have to keep, keep we have to just yeah. keep little it waves is, every now it, and then. It, <laughs> it is a really strange feeling as well because obviously now we're sat here, we can hear all of our harmonies, you know, it, you know exactly the blend, but when you're in the Royal Albert Hall, you've got your in-ear monitors in and you, you can't, it's like you're singing with your hands over your, over your ears, you know. You can't mm. hear anything other than what the sound guy d decides goes into your ears. We, took him, we, we took him out afterwards after you sat, and it's great to kind of sing a cappella because the crowd really don't expect it. Not, mm. I mean, I don't know why, but not a lot of people do it. Yeah. Um, and it was great when you took him out afterwards, you hear him all going nuts, and mm. that all we're doing is just singing with no music. But mm. it was great. It was such a nice feeling, wasn't it? I guess what, you, what you've also, also done, you, you've opened the possibility of a repertoire that goes beyond the standard doo-wop, because yeah. I, get, I get the feeling already that you can just, well, you do, you just break into song mm. at a moment's note. It's covering any kind of music. So you're opening up a whole new repertoire for a kind of vocal harmony that stopped at a certain point in time. Yeah, mm. yeah I, mean, I mean, as well, um, we, we have have, as Timmy said, we have got original songs on our album, and what we've done is we've taken influences from the old doo-wop eras, but we've added a little bit of a modern edge to it as well. So, like you say, there there are no holds barred within reason. Mm. Um, so we're, we're we're certainly lucky to be able to push the boundaries of it. Mm. I think also, you know, Timmy's got quite a sort of almost like an R&B quality to his voice. So immediately that gives it a bit of an edge, I think, mm. and a bit of a modern edge anyway. So. Mm. <laughs> but I get that sense Perfect. that you, it's almost like that, that weird fantasy that people have that, that life is just a constant musical and that you <laughs> can fulfil that and just walking along you can just suddenly make life a musical, you can just break into song. Completely, yeah. It's, I it's, mean, it's just nice to make people smile and do it in the most random places. Yeah. I mean, we were singing, in a, we were on a radio tour the other <coughs> week and we was in Essex somewhere, we was in a cafe and we, we, we just said, oh, we're here on a radio tour, the girl behind the counter was asking questions. She was, oh, can you, can you sing a song? Of course we can, we sang. And this, this, Oh, the beautiful granny. little grand next to us. She must have been oh, in her nineties. Right. She got up, she she started having a little amazing. jig. She was smiling, so and we made her day. Up. And it was just so nice. Mm. It was just such a lovely feeling, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I think it is a real life musical, our life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice because we do live in a bit of a negative era at the mm -hmm. moment, don't we? You know, like recession and everything else. So it is nice to, to do something that's just a bit happy. It's not too cynical. It's mm. just happy, and and it gets your, your foot tapping, and mm. it, it puts a smile on your face. So it's really great to to actually release something like that for a change, mm. you know. But do you think it is just pure nostalgia? And, and if it is, is there necessarily anything wrong with that, or do you think it's something other than just nostalgia? Do you feel like almost historians as, as well, mm. you know, bringing to life something that shouldn't just belong in the past, but still has a role to play now? I don't think it does. It, yeah, I agree. I, I think it. It doesn't just belong in the past. I mean, we've got a, we've got a couple of fans who are under the age of five. <laughs> like, mm. Our first single is called Gambling Man, and, and like their mums will put it on, and, and they're bopping around. So mm. I think, so I think it's a nostalgic sound, but it's surprisingly completely contemporary mm. as well. And it's just, be, it's just had a bit of shade on it for a while, and so we're just sort of. To continue the analogy, we're sort of dusting away the clouds bit. You, you know, as I was saying, the repertoire opens up a lot of modern songs over the last 20, 30 years. Mm. You could do that weren't obviously done. To be done this way. I mean, mm -hmm. what's the most in your in your, your for your feelings the most sort of surprising song that you do in this style? Well, the, well, this is another this is another moment, Paul. <laughs> you think we'd set it up, wouldn't you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> do do what I do, do do what 
do what I do. I've had a little bit too much. All of the people start to rush by. How does he twist the dance? Can't find a drink on man. Where are my keys? I lost my phone. No. What's going on on the floor? I love this record, baby, but I can't see straight anymore. Keep cool. What's the name of this club? I can't remember, but it's all right, all right. Just dance. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. I wanna be the with somebody. Yeah, I wanna dance with somebody. With somebody who loves me. Dance, gonna be okay. Do 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 and just dance. Spin that record wave. Do 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 and just dance. Gonna be okay. Do 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 and just dance. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> Better that way, really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to join in. <laughs> <laughs> Scary moment. We do kind of work so closely with each other that, that you know, if you throw something at us within a, an hour or two, you mm. can get something yeah. that, that's that's transformed into our style. Mm. You know, and it, and it, it, but it comes with practice, doesn't it? it oh yeah, people think it's not like oh, do, people think that sometimes we just burst into yeah. song. It does yeah. take sitting down. But and I suppose you give that illusion because you you give it such ease. Yeah. You know, that it does. It, it, it just feels like you've yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Struggle yeah. mm. <laughs> so of which, you do have that sort of the in New York, the, the, the fetish thing going, the, the Mad Men thing going. Oh, oh yeah. 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 The whip, the, the, the yeah. lapels, the, you know. And, and, and again, you know, we, we take styling very seriously. We mm. style ourselves. And, you know, we, we've, we've... Obviously been, not with that dicky ball. I styled this as well. <laughs> I get a lot of stick about this dicky ball. I'm waiting for it to spin <laughs> <laughs> and light up. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, yeah, you know, like, we've, what we've, we've, we've been conscious of doing is, is taking what they used to wear in the old school, but then add a slightly modern mm -hmm. uh, uh, tint to it. It's a bit fun, don't we? So yeah, yeah, people, people, like, took time and, and care to sort of go out and dress up and be a little bit elegant and... Mm and go and hit the dance floor together and that's fun it's yeah. fun it's fun yeah. putting tie clips laugh. And, and as well yeah. i think the ties music, on and, the, and fun things the music kind of requires it as well you know mm. and we get on our shiny shoes and believe it or not we know. did a gig the other day and um you might not believe what i'm saying but it's the truth lucky what are you gonna wore say pink jeans oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what? lucky wore pink oh, yeah. jeans salmon pink and he jeans pulled, he, he pulled no. them off it was for breast cancer yeah. awareness there was um, a reason down in Southampton, and my juice was the same colour as the strawberry cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an oh, elegance it was in shameful. that. Oh, You can pull off. He did elegance. Yeah, his I face is as pink as his toes. As now we're talking about it. <laughs> what about team over here? She's shaking. Her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Lucky, <laughs> Lucky can pull. Lucky's the, like, the wacky one out of us five. He can pull off crazy colours that we mm. just wouldn't even bother. But everyone's got their own kind of style. How many cravats do you own again, Lucky? Oh, it just keeps growing. Mm -hmm. But it's fun. It's uh, fun. Like I used to work at a uh, quite a posh bar down in Mayfair, and the gents used to come down from the country wearing like corduroy jeans, probably the colour of this sofa, and mm. like a red jacket and a cravat and a weird hat. And I'd, and I was thinking, you're, you're rocking that out, you're pulling that off. And, and I thought, right, I can have fun with that too. Do you think it's also, because now in a way, because of the internet era and everything, kind of everything goes and we've got so much to choose from in terms of fashion over the last you know, century mm. or so, that mm. now the point is you can select you know, what you want to, 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 to present yourself from, mm. from this choice. Uh, in, a, in a contemporary framing, so that, that this is your choice. This yeah. is you know what you like to look like. It's what you like to sound like, mm. based on everything that's been yeah, before. Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. your. I think that also refers to what you were saying before about um, the antiquated nature of of the music. Like, mm. is it relevant? And I mean, you walk if you walk down the high street today, um, ladies, girls are wearing their grandfather's brogues. Mm. Um, mm. Hadley Freeman in the in GT yesterday had an, had an article about that. Mm. Um, like you can walk past Topshop and there are skinny ties in there, mm. and, and it's sort of there's a there's a really nice refined elegance happening mm -hmm. in fashion at the moment, I, and I, I think and the girls have been having so much fun with clothes for so long, and I reckon boys can have mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. of that fun and mm. join in. Do you think it also a, a sort of an age of anxiety time when things are so uncertain and so confusing that to, to go back to when things were a little bit more certain, mm. pre, you know, the Google world, it's all splintered. Do you mm. think there's an element of that with Glee and Mad Men and this kind of thing, the fact that vocal harmonies come back? Do you think there is a yearning for a kind of certainty? The music from, that we're singing, is, it's from a time the, the war was over, employment was high. Everyone sort of had a house, like it was, and people would go out on the weekend and dance, and it was, it was fun, and so, and I think, like, 
like Mike was saying before, the, the, the world's in a, going through a little bit of... It's a grim place for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so this music, it, driving along, you, you start step, tapping the steering wheel. And I think we spent... I think people in general have spent so many years looking into the future. Mm. I think it's only natural to want to look back at the past and kind mm. of get an idea of what it was like to live back then. Mm. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I think it's natural. Yeah. But I think it's also important to think about... You know, it's, we are kind of looking into the past and we are taking um, some of these golden memories of the past and, and, and bringing it to, to today. Mm -hmm. But equally, there is, you know, with Gambling Man, our first single, what, uh, it's a song that we wrote and it is, there is a modern mm. uh, a tinge now. to it. It's yeah. very now. Mm. You know, so it isn't, it isn't just about living in the past, it is about bringing it to we, the future. Are you, you cueing the single then? My odds are stacked. I've never, never been, been a gambling man. man. I've never had the winning hand. But for you, I lose it all. Oh, oh. My odds are stacked. I've never been a gambling man. I've never had the winning hand. But for you, I lose it all. Baby, I'd lose it all. I'm raptured in. Wow. Your sweet loving, Whoa. but it feels just like a curse. Feels just like a curse. Whoa. You're beneath my skin. Whoa. I start trembling. Oh. This love's so dangerous. Oh, okay, we're finished. There you go, <laughs> man. I've, I've seen you described as a do what take that. Do you, do you take that as a compliment? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, they're, they're, those lads have been together a long time and, and doing really well for themselves and after got taking a long break. And they've complete you know? tunes out there as well. Yeah. It's more so for me since their comeback. Like, I'm, 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 like, I'm a fan of them. Mm, huge like, fans. I think they've got beautiful writing skills. And as well, that's the thing as well, because obviously, you know, take that as, as much as, you know, they were a boy, a boy band back in the day, you know, they wrote their own stuff as well, and, mm. and we're Very inspired yeah. by that, and, mm. and we, we want to write our own stuff as well, so that's inspired us, you the, know what The I mean? shows they put on as well, the concerts are absolutely huge, I mean, mm. the, the, oh, it's just amazing, the thought and, and the creativity that goes into it. With Gambling Man, we've got a, a, a very kind of a nostalgic sound, but mm. e equally a current sound. Mm. And, so and what makes it current then, do you think? Just, just the, 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 the suddenly the, the, it is in favour, this kind of thing, or or well, something intrinsically about it? Maybe it's how we approach it vocally as well, even though we've got the elements. Mm. I kind of, I'm, if, I, if I'm singing that, I, I don't think that I'm trying to sound like anyone but myself, really. Mm, yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, and I think we touch on that as well. Like, even, even Lucky sings on, sings on the album and we're singing some Elvis songs, but he's not approaching it like Elvis. Mm, he's giving mm. it far more of a soul mm. element. So mm. I think it's about putting yourself in it. Mm. And if, you, if me, myself, was born in 1982, I wasn't born in the 50s. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So I am naturally going to, you know, put, a, put a, my own whatever so I think is a modern twist. Is, 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 is that, that's, that's strange, that thing about being born after an era that you're fascinated by mm -hmm. and how that develops. Yeah. So how did it develop with you that you become fascinated with an era that's way over before you were born? I think mm -hmm. it was ingrained in me, just in our family really. Yeah. My mum, mm -hmm. you know, my aunties. And he, like when we used to go to weddings, like my aunties would be like jiving with each mm -hmm. other. And, do you know, they all, we were always surrounded by music mm -hmm. back home for me. And car trips as well. We used to go down to Cornwall every year. And it, it would be it would be the drifters that we play, mm. or, so and, and obviously every year every time you get in the car the tape is on so mm. it, it mm. just it drills into your head and grains mm. itself in you. Mm. I was kind of the odd one out with my friends because like we'd all be going out and I'd be like listening to like Jackson Five's Temptations like R and B soul and they would all be like garage music dancing mm. away. Mm. I was kind of the odd one out like that. The other thing that's interesting about you in terms of the show business of it is is, is your story, mm. which I'm hoping is made up. It's not, no. it's not made up. Sorry to <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. disappoint you there. It seems just too good to be true. Mm. The idea of the five of you painting and decorating. Yeah, yeah but this is the thing, people are like, so you're singing painters. That's a bit hard days night, that. Mm. Isn't it? You're, you're singing painters. Well, no, we're, first and foremost, we're a group, we're singers. We did everything you can think of to make money, yeah. literally. I mean, handing out leaflets. Handing out leaflets, <laughs> bar work, um, yeah. waiting. Um, I've got experience working for my dad as, as a decorator when I left school. Mike used to work for a friend in Bristol. Mm. So it got to a point where we was all doing so many different jobs around the country. It was rehearse. getting hard to get together and rehearse. So mm -hmm. me and Mike said, let's try and set up a decorating business and you know, with the hope that we'll get a big enough job where we can all just work together mm -hmm. so we can rehearse before work, in a tea break, after work. 
And lucky enough, like a month later, a job came in mm. in Oxford Street. Mm -hmm. um, literally, we're just singing outside on a tea break, and you know, we we'd never thought in our wildest dreams that's how we'd get spotted. Mm. But no one came up with a contract going, "There you go." It was like, <laughs> go oh, there you, go. you know, I, it was like I know some people, you know, and we weren't even. It was we were we was kind of like, yeah, and yeah. It was, <laughs> and you kind of think, oh, you know, you get a lot of people that say, "I know some people." Yeah. And, and, and true enough, you know, she just said, can you come down and sing some friends of mine? And those mm. friends of hers were actually worn a label, so, mm, right. you know, worn a music. And, and, we, and we, were, we were chuffed a bit just to think. We knew then, opportunities like this do not come along, mm. like far in, in between. And we just thought, right, this is it, lads. They asked us to learn three songs and we put everything into those three mm. songs, you know. Mm. And, and thankfully, you know, we're, we've got an album coming out, you know. Which is great. And what were you singing on Oxford Street when you were That was the longest time. Oh, is that another cue? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Life is a music. <coughs> well, this, 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 is, this is actually a, a, an 80s song by Billy Joel. Uh, it's called The Longest Time, but obviously it's, it's certainly got the... Uh, you like this one? I know, it's not your kind of 80s. It's still 80s though, give us that. It's an 80s. Yeah, it's an 80s. It's this is for you. Let's <laughs> have a little note check. Dum, 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 dum. Whoa. The <laughs> nice thing for the like it's nice in that song because I get words. Normally the bass, <laughs> normally my words, the bass is do wop and shawadi wadi. <laughs> so to actually and your actually infamous. sing some lyrics is okay. a real bonus for me. We do a version of White Christmas as well, and my sister after. And one of our gigs was at home going, Badoo, Badoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she said, I love the bass guy, Badoo, Badoo. Mm. Party trick. And, the, and now I ring her and go, Audrey, if someone wants to say hello. Harry or Audrey? Badoo, <laughs> Badoo. <laughs> and if you were watching the football together, do you respond to the, to, to, to the match in song? In harmony. <laughs> when they score, it's always in harmony. We, we cheer in harmony. <laughs> I don't mean cheering. I'm a West Ham sport, so I've got nothing to cheer about. <laughs> I, was just, I was just, just wondering if, in a hard day's night sense, everybody you live with is getting pretty bored with the fact that you always just break it into song. I've always got told shut up in wherever I've lived. Mm. Yeah, but you, oh. you, you aren't aware. You, you, don't even, you don't even know when you're singing, do you? No, you're I like, don't. Like, -bop, -bop. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like singing to Rex for you. You just like burst <laughs> into something. Sometimes like early in the morning, if we've got a gig or whatever, I'm like in bed, but I'm half asleep, but I'm like checking my voice and I'd be like, zip bip 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 <laughs> but in a cafe, you'd be sitting there like an hour before the gig, and it's like, you know, we, it, in a, it, our headspace is we need to warm up and prepare. And so you'd be sitting there having a cup of coffee in a, in a busy cafe, and you hear, <laughs> and, and he just bursts, he just jumps straight in. Yeah, it's a bit weird. You, yeah, went, you know when he's approaching, you are, Tim, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, Overtones. Uh, thank, thank you. You. Uh, you don't know any Frankie Valley, do you? Yes, we oh, do. Oh. Um, yeah, oh. thank you. Yeah. Are, we, are we just... Yeah. We haven't done this for a while, so... No, it's banned. Yeah. We do know this. <coughs> Here we go, we're oh, just going to do chorus, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 begging, just a song without just going into... Oh, yeah, yeah lovely. Like there you go. You got me begging An empty shell I used to be A shadow of my life is hanging, hanging over, over me A broken, broken man, man. Let it go. go, don't even stand the devil just, just to win my soul. I'm begging, begging you, put your loving hand out, baby. baby. I'm begging, begging, begging you. you, won't you put your loving hand out, darling? Begging. Short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, Thank you very much. You. Thanks a lot.